With Nurtec ODT, I found relief. The only migraine medication that helps treat and prevent all in one. To those with migraine, I see you. For the acute treatment of migraine with or without aura and the preventive treatment of episodic migraine in adults. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec ODT. Allergic reactions can occur even days after using. Most common side effects were nausea, indigestion, and stomach pain. It's time we all shine. Talk to a healthcare provider about Nurtec ODT from Pfizer. Tomorrow on ET. Hey, ET. This is Christian Slater. On set of the Spiderwick Chronicles. Meanwhile, Christian's former co star Tom Cruise is on his knees in London. The 61 year old seemingly surrendering while shooting Mission Impossible 8 in theaters May 23rd, 2025. Remember, though, production was delayed over the last four years due to the pandemic and then the actor strike. We leave you now with news from another Tom, Tom Hiddleston. Mm -hmm. Our Happening now. The search for a young man who went under the water here at Canyon Lake last night continues today. We talk with a young woman, a family friend, who was here when it happened. And the political spotlight now on a courtroom in New York City as former President Donald Trump's first criminal trial gets underway. The big names expected to testify next. Feeling like spring again. We have the humidity, some warmer temperatures. With it, some storm chances to talk about, along with a weekend cold front. I'll tell you what kind of changes that's going to bring live from my Fiesta Metal giveaway. The News of Five starts right now. And first at five, as his own evading arrest case continues, Eric Cantu now suing the city of San Antonio. His attorney is claiming he and his girlfriend were victims of excessive deadly force. That lawsuit filed last week. It also names then SAPD officer James Brennan as a defendant along with the city. The court paperwork also alleges there was a racial component to the shooting, saying that the DA's office told Cantu's parents that Brennan was looking for a Hispanic teen with a bowl haircut, suggesting that Cantu was racially profiled. Back in October of 2022, Brennan approached a vehicle in the parking lot of McDonald's that Cantu was inside. While Cantu was attempting to drive off, Brennan shot him multiple times, critically injuring Cantu, who was 17 at the time. This is some of that body cam video now. The lawsuit alleges poor officer training that allows and tolerates excessive force. In a statement, City Attorney Andy Segovia stands by the city's policy, writing, quote, the San Antonio Police Department's policies concerning the use of force have consistently been found to be well above the legal standard. James Brennan's actions on that day were clearly inconsistent with SAPD training and policy. The claims asserted are without merit, and we will vigorously defend the city in this litigation, end quote. Cantu being represented by civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump. Also new at five, a teenager's cries for help. The desperate attempt to save him, and now the long wait for closure. Dive team searching Canyon Lake today for 19-year-old Roner Alejandro Rojas Pereira. He went under the water yesterday evening. Our Garrett Berger talked with a family friend who was there as they searched. All right, apparently we're having some technical difficulties with that story. Hope to get back to it a little bit later in this newscast. Free, free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! Pro-Palestinian protesters in the street near Loop 1604 hampering travel in the into the Valero headquarters. They say they were protesting against the company for supporting Israel. As this group exercised its right to protest, drivers had to exercise extra patience. The protesters slowing down traffic even more than usual, but our cameras saw San Antonio police officers there as well, helping to keep traffic moving and things peaceful. It was part of a larger worldwide protest against the Israeli military response to the October 7th attack on Israel. A fatal drunk driving case in Austin that took the life of a petite police officer moving forward today as jury selection begins. That development in the case posted on the petite police department's Facebook page. It cites that it's been two years since Officer Jeffrey Richardson was hit and killed. Richardson off duty reportedly working a contract job directing traffic on the Mopac Expressway when he was hit. According to Austin police, the driver, Lindsay Smith, did remain at the scene, was given a sobriety test and had her blood drawn before she was booked on intoxication assault charges. 
The clock is ticking. You have several more hours to file your tax return for 2023. Today, the deadline. Those who want to file easily before midnight tonight can use the IRS direct file. You can also use an IRS trusted partner or paid service. If you aren't ready to file a return, you can always request an extension. It needs to be dated today. Otherwise, you might end up paying a fee. Residents of Maine, Massachusetts and Washington, D.C. even have an extra day or two for observed holidays. People who live or work in federally declared disaster areas can also check their deadlines at irs.gov. It's possible to request an automatic six-month extension for free through an IRS partner on the agency's website. But keep in mind today, the deadline to do that too, and it involves paying estimated taxes. All right, let metal mania begin. We are officially on Fiesta Week 2024. Yeah, the party with the purpose is happening. Adam Kasky standing by giving out the most precious of items at Fiesta. Oh, the most precious items. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> so precious, so precious. And today is the day where I definitely need the megaphone. We are at Tia's Taco Hut on the south side, I-35 and Palo Alto near the Walmart. And let me tell you, come on, let's feel the... Feel the Fiesta energy! And we are at our limit for medals right now. I will have another giveaway later this week. I'll be announcing where that is uh, coming up after the seven day. But I tell you what, I'm liking having these clouds overhead. Now that the humidity is back, it's good to have these clouds giving us a little natural shade, a little bit of a breeze. And my friends over here, what, what were y'all saying earlier? Fiesta! And show me your... <laughs> show me your chanclas! Yeah, I agree. I said, you know what? It's a chancla kind of day out here, isn't it? Okay, take a look at our uh, weather watchers right now. Temperatures are in the 80 degree range, uh, and we're really not going to see a huge change through the rest of this week. High temperatures, you know, afternoon temperatures are going to be fairly consistent. 88 Del Rio, 90 Eagle Pass. 87 in Floresville. You look elsewhere and those temperatures are still pretty much the same. 83 Seguin, 87 in Windcrest. So we're feeling that spring-like warmth. However, a cold front. Yeah, you heard those words right, y'all. A cold front is on the way this weekend. And that's going to affect Sunday and the River Parade. I'll tell you what kind of impact it's going to have in just a bit. We'll see you then. Adam doesn't really need a megaphone, does he? Does it? I mean, Adam with the megaphone, I don't know. I don't know. Right. I thought it sounded good. Yeah, in three more days, it's the party with a purpose. Fiesta 2024 kicks off with Fiesta Fiesta. It's a Texas-sized kickoff party presented by Toyota, and this year it's happening at the Alamo Dome. It's this Thursday. The HEB Plaza will be packed with live entertainment, games, the carnival, lots of food. Admission is free. Ursula and I will be out there broadcasting live on Thursday. Fiesta 2024 goes until April 28th for everything and anything Fiesta. Scan the QR code. It'll take you instantly to the KSAT Fiesta page as your KSAT guide, live stream, broadcast schedule, Fiesta extras. And yes, please post your pictures. Absolutely. KSAT, again, your Fiesta station. We're hosting two special watch parties exclusively for our KSAT insiders. You can scan this QR code, get your tickets right now for our Battle of Flowers party or the Fiesta Flambeau or both parties. But again, first you need to sign up to be an insider. It's quick, it's easy, it's free. KSAT insiders get first access to these tickets along with access to other special events and announcements. Fiesta Fiesta live at eight o'clock, a special show yeah. on Thursday night. To politics now and jury selection held in New York City. This for former President Donald Trump's first criminal trial, which started today. This case stems from payments made to adult film star Stormy Daniels during the 2016 campaign. The trial expected to stay in the national spotlight for weeks now. Outside the courthouse, a lot of cameras, a lot of law enforcement. Our Washington correspondent Julia Benbrook joins us live from Manhattan with the latest on this big case. Julia.
Well, Donald Trump made history today when he walked into this courtroom. He is the first former president to go on trial for criminal charges. Despite a blitz of attempts last week to derail the trial, the jury selection process has started and it will continue until 12 jurors and six alternates are selected. The state charges are related to a hush money payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels in 2016 to cover up their alleged affair. Trump denies the affair and has pleaded not guilty to 34 felony charges of falsifying business records. This is the first time a former president has faced criminal charges. Nothing like this has ever happened before. It's never been anything like it. Prosecutors allege Trump was a part of an illegal scheme to undermine the integrity of the 2016 election and worked with others to falsify company records to hide the payment used to pay for Daniel's silence. At its core, this case today is one with allegations like so many of our white collar cases. There are 42 questions listed on the juror questionnaire. Jury selection will continue until a panel of 12 New Yorkers plus alternates are seated. The selection process could take weeks. It's not a matter of who do you prefer, what your political leanings are. It's can you put that aside and judge the evidence from a fair and impartial basis. The former president will be mandated to attend the trial and is expected to regularly address its developments. It's a case that should have never been brought. It's an assault on America. The trial could last as long as two months and is expected to include testimony from well-known witnesses. Now, this is just one of four criminal cases Trump is facing right now. In total, he faces 88 criminal charges across the four indictments. This hush money case could be the only one to go to trial before the November election. Reporting live in Manhattan, Julia Benbrook, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Julia. All right, let's go live outside to Transguide right now on this Monday. I-35 at Flora, as you can see both the upper and lower deck. Boy. The lower deck is very slow going on I-35. I believe that's the southbound lanes there. Again, both the upper and lower deck southbound lanes seem to be very slow at this hour. I'm Myra Arthur, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. Balcones Heights police shot and killed a woman who they say was on a rampage with a homemade weapon. So what was it and what happened before officers pulled the trigger? We got those answers today from the chief of police. Plus, a heartbreaking case enters its second week of trial. A woman accused of killing her stepson by starvation was back in court today. Why her attorneys are arguing this is not a starvation case after all. And a local entrepreneur with ADHD creates spaces in her life that help her brain function at the highest capacity possible. And she's sharing that with others. She's teamed up with doctors to plan a unique event for people with ADHD. At six, we'll tell you why this is so different. That and more in less than an hour. Thank you, Myra. New at five, a teenager's cries for help. Just part of the story that is going on right now as dive teams search for a missing teenager. Yeah, this is all playing out at Canyon Lake. A 19-year-old has disappeared. Garrett Berger with the story. The same shore where they had gathered and relaxed on Sunday, the family and friends of 19-year-old Roina Rojas Perea gathered and waited today. Everything is just so sad because it's like, it's like he's like underwater and I'm like, like that, that must be really painful. Family friend Ana Palencia said Perea could not swim. He was in an inner tube and no one had noticed him float out. Not until he fell off. And we hear like, we hear him screaming. He's like, help me. He's screaming in Spanish, help me and like waving his arms. And then he goes underwater and like we can't see him anymore. Family and friends swam out desperately trying to reach him. But before they could get to him, he was gone. They were like, what, like five feet of getting him, and that's whenever he drowned. Today, there was nothing to do but wait and hope for the dive teams to find him. Amid the search efforts, family members went out on the water to leave a candle floating in a plastic tub, believing it would come to rest over his body. 
Though the scenic Overlook Park area where this happened is popular with swimmers, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says it's not designated as a swimming area. There are no lifeguards. There is no swim beach. It was not designed for people to swim. So when, every, when people come out here, they do so at their own risk. Perea lived in San Antonio after coming up from Venezuela. Valencia says he was a calm guy and hardworking. He and his brother would send money back to their dad, she says. They wanted to like get a better life because like they would go days without eating over there. It was they had a hard life. But no matter where you go, life always has its dangers. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We want to remind you that uh, the story that we're going to air uh, tonight on pet insurance is going to air tomorrow at five o'clock. All right, let's live cam outside. You can see some clouds. Does that mean rain? Let's check in with Adam Kasky at Tia's Taco Hut. You know, Steve, it means a little bit of rain, a little bit of rain later tonight. Okay. I'll show you a 30 All radar right. in a moment first. Come, yeah, right. Come, and we have better rain chances into the part of the weekend, not the whole weekend, but part of the weekend. Come on, let's feel the fiesta energy. <laughs> Look at this great crowd we have. Oh. We are at Tia's Taco Hut on the south side, I-35 Palo Alto. Now, we don't have any more medals left or wristbands, so you'll have to hit up one of our next giveaways, and that's going to be later this week. I'll have that uh, graphic here coming up in a minute. Let's chat a little weather, okay? Okay. Let's get right to Authority Radar. A few showers popping up off to the west right now in parts of the hill country. Not Nothing significant, and we're not going to see much in terms of accumulations from these little showers. This is that little bit of rain uh, that I was talking about, and we'll see some of that even in and around San Antonio later on tonight. A few of those uh, little pop-up showers here and there. Again, not much on the radar, but later this evening and tonight, we could see a few more of those just isolated in nature and light. Temperature-wise, it's not going to cool off much because of this humidity. By midnight, we'll be at 70, and then we're on cruise control right at 70 the rest of the night. Tomorrow morning, 70 degrees with the high humidity, low clouds, yeah, a few sprinkles here and there. Right? Just little nuisance sprinkles really don't add up to anything. And then by the afternoon, we'll gradually get into some sunshine, making it to 80, 85 for the high temperature. Here's the big picture. A lot of clouds overhead. We know that because of the flow off the Pacific. Yeah, think back to our total eclipse, you know, when we had these clouds no matter what because of the flow off the Pacific, but that's what we have right now, and it's really going to be in place a good portion of this week. Big Blue H over Mexico, drifts over the Yucatan Peninsula, impulses of energy. It's going to lead to some rain and storm chances here and there, but I think the best chance is with this cold front by Saturday night. Oh, yeah. A cold front during Fiesta, we don't get that very often. But notice how a few pop-up showers and storms, particularly Thursday evening, that's Fiesta Fiesta. We'll have to keep an eye on that. That's a 30% chance. Friday and Saturday, a 20 to 30% chance. But Saturday night, we boosted it up to 60%. We could actually have some meaningful rainfall for a change by Saturday night. So keep your fingers crossed for, for that to follow through and to verify. Temperature wise, you know, we get a little bit warmer, but not nothing significant for this week. Fiesta, Fiesta up to 90 for the high temperature. But then the cold front hits Saturday night and look what that does for Sunday. Hey, how does how does 70 degrees for a high temperature sound on Sunday? Yeah, I think everybody's uh, excited for that. And low humidity, Monday River Parade, sunny 80 for an afternoon high and still low humidity. So actually getting very uh, lucky and fortunate, it looks like, for the river parade. All right, my next Fiesta Metal giveaway is Friday. Friday at Christus Children's downtown. Friday at Christus Children's downtown. And we'll be posting that, of course, online and on the social media. All right, we're having fun. Look at this big crowd. We're going to have to, we're, we're, we're going to get in the middle of this big crowd. Have some fun with our folks here. Ooh, 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 there it is, there it is. Everybody give me a viva! Viva! Fiesta! <laughs> Such a good crowd. We're gonna get some of our raffles, and I do have the, I do have the full-size thermometer to give away at 620. All right, we'll see you at six.
<laughs> He's getting paid for that, y'all. Yeah, no, he's having fun. That's good. It's fiesta spirit, right? Absolutely. you got to have fun this week. Yeah. By the way, great way to end the season for the Spurs. It's exactly what this young Spurs squad needed to beat Denver a couple nights ago and then end the season beating the Detroit Pistons. Exactly what the Silver and Black wanted, a winning streak to cap off this season. Plus, where was C.J. Stroud when he found out the Texans traded for Stephon Diggs? Coming up. Spurs beat the Pistons yesterday, 123-95 in their regular season finale to finish the season with a two-game win streak. They knocked off Denver and Detroit to cap off their 82-game schedule. So the Spurs won six of their last 10 games and seven of their final 11, and that stretch includes a three-game win streak, their longest of the season. Ending strong was key for this young ball club. It helps us a lot. I mean, as you see the other night and then tonight, it's a big... We grew throughout the year, uh, even through the ups and downs. We still continue to play great, uh, play hard, and just be ourselves and be great teammates. So, Victor Wimanyama sat out the finale for right ankle injury management. He played in 71 games this season and averaged 21.4 points, 10.6 rebounds, and a league best 3.6 blocks per contest. During his exit interview yesterday, he was asked, does he feel he met expectations? Not really, because um, this is not how I feel. Maybe it's the case, but it's not how I feel because um, I always, every day, I, I try, you know, to push harder and to to do more, have like, you know, get more achievements, uh, more more records, you know, more wins. And um, but the next day, I always tell myself that I, I you know, I didn't do enough, and it, to, you know, to push me even more. So it's you no, know, my first my first impression is, isn't that I exceeded any expectation; is that I should have done more. NFL clubs with returning head coaches can begin offseason workouts today, so the Houston Texans reported to work. This gave reporters a chance to ask quarterback C.J. Stroud, how did he find out the Texans traded for Bill's wideout, Stephon Diggs? I found out I was actually asleep. Um, I was asleep. On the, I was, I've only been in the West Coast. I've been back home in L.A., so I was knocked out. Um, and I keep my phone on do not stare. I get a lot of phone calls. Um, <laughs> and so I didn't really know. And I woke up, and my boy Chase B um, texted me. And he's like, how you feeling, bro? And I'm like, I'm, he's like asking me. like, I was like, I'm, I'm good, fam. How are you? And so, like, and then I, I had sent, like, five texts like that. And then I woke up. For real, this I was kind of halfway texting in the bed. Woke up, brushed my teeth, washed my face, you know. Um, and then I seen the news, and I seen it on like, Instagram. I'm like, oh, shoot, that's what they talking about. Yeah, that's what they're talking about, sleeping. <laughs> How do you yeah, like well, that? well, you know, no urgency there. Nah, you got to sleep. Got to sleep. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. A few showers have popped up west of San Antonio, and tonight there's a small 20% chance for a stray shower. But again, better rain chances on Thursday, only 30% for Fiesta Fiesta, though. Keep that in mind. It's going to be warm for most of this week. Then over the weekend, a cold front arrives. Best chance for rain? Saturday night, 60%. Then low humidity Sunday and pleasant and very nice weather for the River Parade next week. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for watching the News of Five. World News Tonight up next. We'll see you back here at 6.